Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Levi McCurdy, and this is episode 51 of the What Do We Do In podcast. And listen, if you saw an episode 50 right back here, we have the entire backdrop has changed. We've got fucking bottles. We've got designer McDonald's bags back there. We've got limited edition Twinkies. Speaking of, we're doing a giveaway, dude. We hit episode 50. We're definitely hitting episode 52. This one's a fucking doozy. If you don't listen to this whole damn thing and the Patreon and everything else we're doing with this episode 51's bigger than 50 baby and i don't even know about 52 yet but it's definitely coming so if you saw this right here uh on episode 50 you'll notice that i have secured a limited edition box of twink coin twinkies by hostess okay these are specially limited edition made different shape twinkies okay this is what we're calling twink coin you can go you can buy this cryptocurrency right now i don't know if that's true because this isn't a sponsor so they didn't give me any details all i know is i own this box of twinkies that are shaped like a coin so we're calling it dollar sign twink coin because it's cryptocurrency dude and guess what we're giving it away I have another box downstairs and that box has not been opened yet because I just want to put another label on it because I want to ship it to one of you guys. So here's the giveaway details. If you want your very own box, a limited edition Twink Coins, Twinkie shaped cryptocurrency Twink Coins right here. Fucking you want your own box. Listen, they're only like it's, it's only a couple dollars to buy your own. But you could get it for free for me. So just do something digital on the internet that doesn't actually even mean anything and get a box for free. And that way you don't have to spend your money. Listen, here's all you have to do. One entry, like this video. If you like this video on YouTube, you get one entry. Leave a comment on this video on YouTube, five entries. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're already subscribed, guess what? You automatically have five entries. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, click the bell, all notifications, and then you get five entries, 10 entries, 10 entries if you subscribe, okay? And if you join our Patreon, it's only a dollar, okay? If you join our Patreon, you get 100 entries. And on top of that, and basically, if you get 100 entries, you're going to win. Like, there's only going to be one to two people that join the Patreon, and those people will most likely win. So if you join the Patreon for a dollar, you'll get a box of Twinkies, for a dollar it's not even a contest anymore you literally just have to pay a dollar and you'll like most likely win you know what i mean like do you know what i'm saying and if you do all those things join the patreon subscribe leave a comment and like this video if you do the trifecta even though it's four things i'll get you on the podcast you'll be out listen if you do all those things, if you sign up for the Patreon, if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, if you leave a comment and like this video, the main episode, the clip, it doesn't matter. I'll look at both because it's confusing and I don't have time to explain it. So either like the main episode video on YouTube or the clip of the contest on YouTube. It doesn't matter, dude. Just like one of them. Like them both for more entry. I'll give you more entries if you like a fuck about. So if you like them both, and you do the comment, and you subscribe, and you join the Patreon. If you do all those things, you'll not only get a fuck it. Listen, I'll send you a case. I'll send you a case of Twinkies. Maybe not these, maybe regular ones. I don't know what I can get my hands on, but I'll send you a case of Twinkies, and you can be a guest. And you can be a guest on the podcast. You know what I mean? So if you do all those things, only positive energy is coming for you you know what i mean so do those things and join the twink coin twinkie revolution okay that's it ladies and gentlemen my name is levi mccurdy and this is episode 51 of the what are we doing podcast
Listen, we're back from vacation. We're back. Here we go. Technically, last week we were back, okay? But that episode was written before, during, and after vacation, so we're just going to disregard episode 50 altogether, okay? It's doing great numbers. Great numbers. You guys are loving it. This last weekend... This last weekend, the clips, the reels, the shorts, the everything, everything we did to promote this podcast, you guys fucking blew it up. Between reels, shorts, YouTube clips, videos, Instagram, and Facebook, episode 50 this past weekend got like 10, 15,000 views, dude. Like an insane number. An insane number. So um, basically, we're going straight real, straight short, straight Facebook vertical. Everything's vertical from now on. Anyways, we're back from vacation, and I'm engaged. I'm an engaged man. Ladies, listen, there's no ring on it yet because we haven't decided. I'm either getting the $10 stainless steel from Amazon, I'm getting the $200 stainless steel from Facebook ads, or... I'm getting the $2,000 stainless steel from the jewelry store. Either way, I don't have a ring yet, but guess what? Meg's does. So I'm off the market now, okay? We're definitely getting married. We're definitely in love. It's unfortunate uh, for the rest of you, but for me, I'm as happy as fuck. You know what I mean? So, um, and you know what? It's, it's, we, God damn, dude. We haven't stopped talking about Myrtle Beach since we left Myrtle Beach, okay? Megs gave me two to three years, okay? And in that two to three years, I need to move her down there permanently. And, like, I'm over here coming up with ideas, like, right now. Like, I got messages. I got messages. I got messages to the realtor saying, listen, what would we do if we sold the house now? We use that capital to pay for an apartment for Megs and Ollie to move down now. I stay here for two to three years, live with Kodak, Justin, Paul, whoever, 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 couch surfing, doing whatever, paying like two or 300, giving my friend like 300 bucks to stay at his place for a month, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then like Megs and Ollie are already down in South Carolina. And then in two years when I'm ready and have some shit established here, because listen, we're working on some shit. Me, Paul, Kodak, Scott, everyone, we're working. The team is working. And in two to three years, I'll be in a position where I can probably go. Okay? So, we need to figure some shit out. But I'm toying around with the idea of doing it sooner rather than later. You know what I mean? Uh, and so it's like, you know, we're back to PA it's, we're we're back to the hell hole. We're back to the hell hole and we're not thrilled. Like we're not thrilled to be back. You know, it's kind of been miserable since we've been back. You know, it's not in South Carolina spotted lantern flies and their babies. Like the babies are now fully grown and now we have their babies and there's babies, adults and teenagers spotted lantern flies everywhere. And we can't take it anymore. And so I just want to go back to the world of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where I'm eventually going to live. Because like when we were there, I rented a moped for four days. I've never felt more free in my life. Now, for those people who know me, like you guys know you know that I've wanted a moped for so long. I've wanted a moped since like college. I almost bought one in college and they're not expensive either, dude. They're not expensive to buy. Like the one I'm going to get is like 2,200. It's like two grand. It's easy. It's a weekend hustling and you'll have two grand. And so I want one now because I rented one in Myrtle Beach. We were wing, we were weeming around for fucking three or four days. I had to give it back on Friday because I knew Ollie was coming. Megs didn't know. She was like, why didn't you keep it for the whole time? And I was like, we can't because Ollie's coming. But she didn't know that at the time. And so the stipulations, unfortunately, are 
as soon as I buy Mags a house in South Carolina, I then ha- I then can get my own moped. And so, <clears throat> you know what I mean? And so, but here's the other thing. The golf carts down there, it's a golf cart community in Myrtle Beach, okay? It's also really big. So, most houses come with a golf cart garage. And I toyed around with the idea making our golf cart garage like Corpo or maybe like, you know, a studio or maybe an office space. But then I realized we need a golf cart and a moped when we move to Myrtle Beach, okay? This isn't me officially announcing we're moving to Myrtle Beach, but it's a good indication that we're probably going to go. Now, the question is, when I move to Myrtle Beach, will I put a colored loofah on my golf cart? Okay? This is the question. Here we go. The question is, are you rocking a loofah on your golf cart? Okay. Have you ever heard of the villages in Florida? Because these people... The villages in Florida, so, okay, so when you go down to Myrtle Beach, when you go to Florida, when you go to any beach town, they have communities, right? That's normally where you're going to buy, like my Aunt Linda, she has her condo in her beach town, like it's in a community, there's like a hundred other people there, there's a pool, there's an HOA, it's a whole thing, right? That's where she has hers. That's where we'll most likely buy our house in Myrtle Beach because it's just the amenities and the things that come with it are so much nicer than what you would get at like the trailer park down the street, okay? So the villages in Florida are a lot like the communities in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. But the difference is in South Carolina, they don't do the loofah thing yet. They don't do the loofahs yet. And so what we're hoping to do when Megs and I move there in two or three years uh, is to introduce the loofahs, okay? Now, the Villages is Florida's friendliest hometown. And I have for you on the screen right now the village's loofah guide. So everyone there has a car, everyone there has a bike, everyone there has a vehicle, they get around because when you need to go more than five to 10 miles down the street and in that town, five to 10 miles takes you like it's like 30 to 45 minutes because of how it works. When you drive your golf cart just down the street to like the dollar store or the grocery store, you have loofahs in there. And so depending on what color loofah you have depends on what color, I'm sorry, depending on what color loofah you have depends on what, uh, you know, thing you're into as far as swingers. Now, this community is like 50 plus. They're like an older retirement community. And the different loofah colors mean different things. So like, here's the picture on the screen. If you have a white loofah in your golf cart, that means you're a novice, you're a beginner. Okay. You just move into the community. You just got your golf cart. You just figured out there's a loofah code. This is where you go when you want to be introduced. And I'm assuming once you have a white loofah in your cart, someone with a different colored loofah is going to come along and explain the game to you. Someone's going to want to take you under their wing, put your arm around your shoulder and say, listen, I see you got a white loofah there. And then I'm going to say, What are you doing? And so, you know what I mean? Like, they'll probably introduce you into the gang. And so once you're done with your white loofah, you put that bitch in your shower. And then you upgrade. 
The next step is a purple loofah. And the purple loofah is people who like to watch. So if you yourself as a man like to watch your wife, presumably, get fucked by another man or, you know, whatever they're into, sucking, fucking, licking, what are we doing? You know what I mean? If you're a watcher, put a purple loofah in your golf cart, okay? And you can watch, and people will know that you like to watch. And if, listen, if you like to watch with other people watching, so like if you're a watcher with watchers, you put a pink bitch, you put that pink loofah in your golf cart and people will know the pink is a soft (laughs) Jesus Christ I can't even say it pink is a soft swap people who like to do it with others in the room so your spouse is watching with a purple loofah but the pink loofah means that Karen and her neighbors can come over and watch as well so your friends are also watching with a pink loofah now a blue loofah is the lowest level of full swap those who can play well with others so it's not a completely full swap (laughs) it's not a completely full swap but those who can play well with others are putting a a blue 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 loofah in their shit yellow is a mid-level swap for those who want to have fun but are still nervous black is a full swap for those who want the hell and let it all go down so if you're trying to get down and brown and fucking around if you're trying to get down and around put a black loofah in your golf cart and then at the that so the black loofah is like where it's where it ends and then the alternative is a teal colored not blue but teal colored loofah that means you're bisexual and for those people who want to increase their dating chances listen here's the thing as soon as i get a golf cart i'm lining it with every color loofah imaginable just to confuse the shit out of everyone else in the community (laughs) like a full array of rainbow color loofahs Basically me, I'm making a new rule right now, a rainbow of loofahs in your golf cart. Like I'll have just like 12 command hooks in the thing of my golf cart. And on each one of those command hooks is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different colored loofahs. It's going to be a rainbow of a loofah. And you know what that means? I just want to put my dick anywhere near a hole. You know what I mean? So like all those single colored loofahs are for the people, you know, all those, you've got to fuck it. You definitely, dude, you definitely have a rainbow of loofahs in your shit. I'm telling you right now, if you have a rainbow of loofahs, that pretty much means you can just put your dick in any hole anywhere. Like, can we be honest with ourselves for a minute? Like, let's just be honest. It's a retirement community, okay? So it shouldn't be a shock. Like, who's shocked here? We learned years ago, like years ago, especially during COVID, especially these old people, like 60, 65, 70 years old, having nothing to do with their day. They have nothing to do but play bingo, eat lunch, take walks, and fuck each other. At 65 years old, you've done all you can do for your relationship. If you're still working shit out with your husband at 65 years old, there's other problems afoot, okay? But if you're married, you've been happy and married and gay for over 40 plus years. So it's time to let go and have some fun. Okay. Who cares? Look, who cares if your husband 
is throwing his back out with Rob and Karen down the street. He'll be back. He'll be back the same way he's been back every time for the last 40 plus years of your marriage. Okay. At that age, it shouldn't just be golf carts. Okay. You should see old people with loofahs just hanging in their carts at the grocery store on the rascal scooter. I'd have the colored loofahs on my wrist I just have one hanging on my wrist. So even if I'm not driving my golf cart, you know what I mean? Like promote that shit loud and proud. I mean, isn't that it though? Isn't that the way to go? Just having sex, right? Like in your sleep, in your sleep, dude. While you're driving down the highway, like it's just that, no, that's boring. That's boring. Have sex with that fine ass piece of 75 year old pussy around the corner. And when you blow your final load, your fucking heart gives out. Your wife will be pissed. Your wife down the street will be pissed. But that's okay because she'll hear about your death. While she's sucking off Tommy down at 304, okay? Let the old people live. You know what I mean? Like, let the old people. So what if they have loofahs, upside down pineapples, fucking whatever they do to indicate the fact that they're ready to go? We learned that during COVID, I mean, like, that's how it spread in the fucking retirement home. That's how it spread. All I'm saying is, By the time that Megs and I are 70 years old, we better have a full line of black or dark gray, dark as night, whatever color you want to call it, poof of a loofah in our golf golf cart. You know what I mean? We're going all the way. We're going all the way. Black loofah, full swap, okay? You know what I mean? Like... (laughs) What the hell? Let it all go down. Like once, once you go black loofah, you never go back. You know what I mean? Once you put a black loofah in your golf cart. Who the fuck? Hey, what do I pay you for? Who the fuck is Andrew Tate? Who is Andrew Tate? I haven't stopped hearing, TikToking, podcasting, listening to the name Andrew Tate. I believe, listen, I believe if my memory serves me correctly, I heard his name. When did I hear his name? This was like two or three weeks ago. Two or three weeks ago, did Logan or Jake, which one is it? Let J- Logan Paul is fighting now? No, Logan... Who? Logan Paul is in the WWE. Jake Paul. Is it Jake Paul? Fucking, it's the fucking... I can't keep the Paul Brothers straight. And my fucking lisp. Did you hear that? I can't keep the Paul Brothers straight. (laughs) Jake Paul wants to fight Andrew Tate. Right? That's right. That's right. So, as soon as I heard that Jake Paul wanted to fight Andrew Tate. And I think Andrew said, no, he called Jake a pussy. It's a whole thing. They went back and forth. As soon as that happened, I haven't stopped seeing this man everywhere. Not Jake. Trust me. I follow Jake Paul and I've seen that man everywhere. I'm still trying to put it together. I'm still trying to figure all out. I'm still trying to put the pieces together. Have you seen, like, have you seen any of Andrew Tate's clips? Like he, okay, here's, <laughs> here's, uh, here's Andrew Tate. This is, this is just literally, I literally just Googled, I, I YouTubed him and I said top savage moments or top Andrew Tate 
most memorable moments. This is the first one. Here we go. Ready? Watch this. The only water I drink is sparkling water because sparkling water is for rich people. And I'll tell you why. You can get non-carbonated water, still water, from the fucking tap. The government gives you that shit effectively for free. But I don't like sparkling. You don't like sparkling water? You don't like water? Yeah, but the bubbles. The bubbles? So, I'll tell you right now. Listen. <clears throat> I've been in one fight. One instance in my life where I had to put my hands up, okay? When, when the rest of the boys on the senior trip picked me, and we're talking high school, when they picked me and chose me to box, never did I fight, never did I box, never have I been in combat before. Listen, before this, the best I could do was karate lessons, and those don't prepare you for real life, okay? I've never boxed or fought hand-to-hand -hand combat before until this very moment. They chose me to box this other kid named Dylan, and Dylan worked out, okay? His arms were bigger than my neck, okay? So they put the gloves on me, and they counted down, and everyone simultaneously towards the end of the countdown shouted, put your hands up, Levi, put your hands up. You got to put your hands up. You're going to get fucked up. And as I turned to face him, his fist was already right here. His fist was right here, dude. I get hit and immediately fall to the ground and cover my face, taking the advice of everyone in this hotel room, chanting me on to fucking fight this kid, right? So I cover my face. And when I tell you, he got on top of me and beat the ever-living shit out of me for what felt like 19 years. Like, he's just fucking just punching the shit out of my face. It felt like 19 years. And for what felt like an eternity, you know, like, mm, you know, like when, when UPS, <laughs> you know, like when UPS says your package will arrive between 2 p.m. and 9 p.m. So you sit and you wait and you make plans around this time and like you're back to your house by 1:30 p.m. just in case you're you know you're late or you're early you know and and they end up dropping it off at two o'clock exactly and 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 you know you're, you're waiting you're waiting and then you wait until 9 18 p.m. at night when the UPS man finally pulls into your circle on a late night delivery, your quote unquote late night delivery. That's how long it felt. That's how long it felt to be down there while this grown man at 18 years old, like literally just only two to five punches in. And I just was covering my face. And as soon as everyone said and pulled him, he, they pulled him off of me and they pulled him off of me. I ran out of the room crying on my way to the pool to drown myself right then and there. Like the, the, the pool at our resort was two feet away from our hotel room. And so I ran there crying. They all witnessed this. Who knows what they said? Who knows what they said as soon as I left the room. But as soon as I did, I ran to the pool crying, immediately ready to drown myself. I said, this is it. This is the lowest moment of your life. They don't respect you. They will never respect you. You were the most popular kid in high school, and now it's over. They beat the shit out of you. You're done. Just fall face first into the pool. Drown yourself. That's it. They'll think it was an accident. No one will think otherwise. You'll be a hero. And they'll remember you forever for the rest of your life for drowning on the senior trip. So I did it. I fell face first into the pool. I was fully committed to kill myself that night because these boys bullied and beat me up. 
And of course, like two minutes later, the teachers and the kids, they pulled me out of the pool. I was face down. It was nine minutes in. I was almost, almost fading black. And then whoosh, they pulled me out of the pool. Fuck. Little did they know, it was just a fucking magic stunt. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't actually trying to kill myself. It was just a magic stunt, and I had just beat the world record for holding my breath. Second to David Blaine, dude, on the Oprah show, okay? Second to David Blaine. They pulled me out of the water, and then basically I showed them some card tricks, and they laughed, and then they told me one of the girls on the senior trip thought I was cute, and it made me feel better, and it was a really great trip. So I pretty much forgot about the fact that they beat the shit out of me in the hotel room and chalked it up to being a great senior trip in Florida. And despite all that, dude, sparkling water, it's not my thing. I don't drink soda. Nine times out of ten at a restaurant, I order water. W-A-T-E-R, water, as he says it. So I've been personally attacked. I've been personally attacked by Andrew Tate. And, you know, if you yourself have been personally victimized by Andrew Tate, please call this number, okay? Please call the What Are We Doing podcast. My personal phone number is 717-819-8215. I couldn't be more serious when I say that. If you feel personally victimized by Andrew Tate, call me. My personal number is 717-819-8215. I won't answer, but please leave a voicemail, okay? And tell us your story. Tell us how you yourself have been victimized, okay? And like, we're not even... We're only 21 seconds into this video and I've already been victimized. I mean, listen, have you seen some of these other videos? Some of these other videos that he's done, I just saw one, I just saw one the other day where he goes, <clears throat> he goes, let me tell you right now, man. Let me tell you right now. Men are better than women, man. And I'm going to explain to you right now how men are better than women. And then he stands up like he's going to fucking demonstrate some shit. Like he stands up and he goes, he goes, <laughs> and then he laughs and he's like, he goes, men are better than women. He says, watch. And then he takes a 16 pound bowling ball and he goes, watch this. If you say, hey man, what's up? To, to two of your guy friends, if you take two of your guy friends and you say, hey man, what's up? And you throw a 16 pound bowling ball at them, those two guy friends, 100% of the time, they're gonna catch the ball. They're gonna catch the bowling ball. And if you said, hey, what's up? To two, uh, you know, uh, two really hot, 18 year old females that you found walking on the street that look like they have daddy issues and you say hey what's up don't worry i'm not gonna traffic you we're not gonna get trafficked uh but hey will you do an experiment for me and then he says hey what's up and then tosses a 16 pound bowling ball right and then it obviously hits them and he says a hundred times out of 10 your guy friends will catch the bowling ball and 2,000 times out of 10 girls will let the bowling ball hit them in the face and that's how you know that that guys are better than females and that's how you know it's literally every one of his TikToks every one of his TikToks is saying how women are are like not as great as men and like he uses these absurd examples you know what i mean you know what i mean but 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 here's the thing he's viral on tiktok okay he's viral on tiktok and so he doesn't have a tiktok account okay 
And, but Levi, what do you mean? I see him every day on TikTok. What do you mean he doesn't have a TikTok account? I see him on, that's where only where I see him is on TikTok. Nope. He doesn't have a TikTok account. Okay. This is what Andrew Tate does to make his money. He sells a course on how to sell a product. So essentially an MLM. Andrew State is the creator and co-founder of Shakeology, the non-pyramid scheme from the mid-2020s, okay? But instead of shakes, he is the product, okay? You buy into his course for men. He has this, like, this digital online course for how to be a better man. And it's basically just him podcasting And then the course is how to make clips out of that podcast and promote that on TikTok, YouTube Shorts, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook Reels, everything, and make money to get other people to sign up for his course. So based on his outrageousness, you're supposed to post his videos and then make money when people sign up. Because when people sign up, It's a 50-50 split. Andrew gets 50% and you get 50% of what that person made signing up. And guess what? If you sign up 10 more people, they get 50%. Andrew gets 50%. You sign up 20 more people, they get 50%. Andrew gets 50%. You sign up 19 more people under them and now you have 97 people under you. Andrew gets 50%, you get 50%. He's the product, dude. Listen, it's like, he's, he's, and he just said, he just says whatever he wants. He just says some outrageous, some outsurge shit. Here it is again. Here's, here's more of Andrew Tate's most savage moment. Listen to this. Ready? Here we go. I only suggest you do the same. Get all your friends around, call every friend you have right now. Invite them over for a party. When they all turn up, pour out sparkling water. Say, everyone, let's have a glass of water together. Water can't hurt anybody. We're all probably dehydrated anyway. What's the worst water can do? Let's have a nice glass of water and everyone's gonna drink it. When you see that one dude, oh, there's bubbles. Never speak to him again. Here's a- You know what I mean? Listen, invite your friends over. Pour them all a shot, okay? They're going to think it's vodka, tequila, some form of clear liquor. Invite your friends over, pour them a shot of water, and the one friend who makes a face when they take the shot, do like Gary V says and shoot that fat, ungrateful friend right in the motherfucking face. If your friend, this is how you eliminate friends, according to Andrew Tate, you need to destroy and eliminate all your friends who don't like sparkling water. Okay. <laughs> Listen, so he's going viral, this dude, for no reason. He's going viral, but all of it's not butterflies and rainbows. Okay. In the world of MLM management right? Like you don't make millions of dollars without overturning some rocks that might get your interest from the police. So police last month raided Andrew Tate's home and his connection with a human trafficking case. Ouch. Um, Uh, made that human trafficking joke earlier and now it seems kind of fucked up. You know what I mean? I made a joke about a girl being trafficked earlier and now it seems like... Like Andrew Tate is... (sighs) On social media, Tate portrayed himself as a wealthy cigar-smoking playboy or as our friends at the Nelk podcast the full send podcast would say gar smoking playboy we'll get to that in a minute promoting one admirer to dub him the king of toxic masculinity 
But Tate's treatment of women had an ugly side. In 2016, he was booted off the British version of Big Brother over a video of him hitting a woman with a belt. This March, Britain's Daily Mirror tabloid profiled him and his brother, Christian Tate, and their Romanian-based business, which they used webcam models to trick men into sending the brothers thousands of dollars. In one video of his YouTube channel, Andrew Tate said 40% of the reason he moved to Romania was because Romanian police were less likely to pursue sexual assault allegations. Well, there you have it. But I mean... You know what I mean? I don't know. Sounds legit. Sounds like these are all allegations in this country. And what it seems like Romania is innocent until proven guilty. You got to admit. You got to admit. He kind of seems right here. He kind of seems right. I don't know. Andrew Tate kind of seems right. It's bang out the machete. Boom in her face and then grip her up by the neck. Like, shut up, bitch! Her panties get wet. The machete's on the floor, her panties are all wet. And you go, fuck her. That's how it goes. Every real G knows these basic moves. Every real G. The basic moves of pimping. I will pick you up with one hand by your titty. Yeah. Why are you walking around with a ball? You need your hands free. What if you have to grab a girl's ass or punch a dude in the face? This is it. What if you're not combat ready? Walk around with your fucking doo 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 doo. It's gay. They're walking around, Here we headphones go. in, super killable. Couldn't even hear me sneak up on them with a fucking chainsaw. Do, 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 do. I'm thirsty. I buy a bottle of water. I drink the entire bottle of water and I throw the bottle away and free my hands for combat. Maybe I'll be attacked imminently. Ha, ha, who, who knows? Ha, ha, who, ha, ha, and I have to have keto. Do I ha. A fucking rock. And ha, it too to save my life. Ha, women message me. I get it all the time. All the time. I get a message me. Women message me. Listen, 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 listen. Hey, what? <laughs> listen, this dude. What? What, dude? How many times has Andrew Tate been attacked on the street? How many times? Listen, he... He's always ready for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Like, when has this dude ever been carrying a bottle of water? He's just walking around the street with a bottle of water. And he said, and someone runs up to him. Someone runs up to him and says, hey, you're Andrew. I want to fight you. And then Andrew goes, ah, oh, shit, man. Shit. I'd love some hand-to-hand -hand combat right now, but um, I've got this bottle of water in my hand. Maybe some other time, you know what I mean? Maybe some other time I'll fight you, but I've got this bottle of water in my hand. No man in the history of anything has ever, like, you know, put down a fight because he had a bottle of water in his hands. And of course, of course, of course, of course, Andrew Tate has been recently seen hanging out with our friends, the Nelk Boys, okay? The, what are they called? The Elk Boys from Canada? What do they do? Oh, the Nel Nelk Boys. I swear, we'll have a counter on the screen, and I'm just, I'm like, I'm cringing. I'm cringing at the very beginning of this episode. Every time this man, Kyle, says, Go, I, mm. just listen, listen to how many times this kid says, Gar. All right, boys, welcome to a fucking big Full Send podcast episode. We just flew all the way to Croatia. First of all, they flew all the way to Croatia because Andrew Tate isn't allowed. Allegedly, we're presuming that Andrew Tate isn't allowed on the grounds of the United States. Fucking hopped on a plane. We're in Croatia. We got Andrew Tate right here. Lighting up a cigar. Guy loves gars. It's a good sign. What's good? You ready for this pod? Get for the pod? Let's go. Born ready, Jesus. 
This guy loves gars right here. He's ready for the pod. He's ready for the pod to smoke a gar. We're going to be smoking a lot of gars on this pod. We're going to smoke a gar and we're going to smoke a pod. Here we go. You have extra gars? Or you got extra gars or what? You got extra? Do we bring extra gars? On the plane ride over here to Lithuania, do we bring extra gars? Some, some. Wait, what are these? Tea. What the fuck is this, boys? Are we good? Or we could have the cigars come in mid show, right, Andrew? Or you want to start with a gar? We can do. I just want to make sure she doesn't fuck it up. You want to start with a gar or what? You want to start with a gar? Sade. You want a gar? Yo, stay. You got extra gar for me, bro? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna start this podcast right now, bro. We're gonna start this podcast right now with a gar. You're gonna gar me. You want a gar? You want to smoke some gars? Listen, <laughs> he sm. Here we go. Right, watch this. Listen. Who's on? <laughs> whose duty is that? Yeah, who's on? Who's on cigar duty right now? The who's on guard? Duty? She's supposed to be getting them. Is that your girl or assistant? Or? <laughs> it's a chick. One of my chicks. Yeah. One of my, so one you, of my wives. I've got four wives. They're from Ethiopia. I've got four wives. They're from Ethiopia. His fucking wife. Like, I can't. Like, I just literally can't. Like, and look, see, like I told you, I told you that there's fucking, there's Shakeology. There's Shakeology in the background. Andrew Tate is the fucking, he knows Shakeology. He's selling in the background and they got the full send podcast logo on it. Fucking Shake Powder. Get it now. Fullsend.com. Okay. And listen, <clears throat> Listen, there's this clip, dude, okay? Like, if you, like, if the trafficking and hitting women thing, it's all an act, right? It's all an act. He didn't actually do it. Or, you know, he's not in jail yet. So, allegedly, allegedly at this point, right? Allegedly, he hasn't trafficked anyone. He's not doing anything wrong. There's nothing going on with Andrew Tate and underage women, it's nothing. We just have this clip right here. Blow up the internet. I'll blow up the internet right fucking now. The reason 18 and 19 year olds are more attractive than 25 year olds is because they've been through less dick. Because that 26 year old has talked to more guys, been to the club more times, been more places, been fucked and dumped more times, more arguments. 18 and 19 year olds fresh, and I can fucking put my imprint on her, and make her a good person, and without her having to go through all that detriment to learn about life. So what's your key age range? 19 to. It's not. It's not just about the age range. Just the example. No, I know, but what's your what's your what's your preference? I mean, hot girls are hot girls, yeah. right? Hey, got him, got him. Listen, he's got a point. Okay, hot girls are hot girls, 18, nine. I'm joking. I'm fucking joking. Jesus Christ, I'm joking. What a disgusting piece of human being, okay? Lock him up. Lock him up. Lock him up with the Ruby Tuesday execs. We're getting to that in a minute. I mean, what are people thinking? Lock this bitch up. Okay, he's fucking, he's talking to underage girl, well, not underage theoretically, but fuck it, he's flying right in the gray area of the radar, and it's not just, fucking, this guy is insane. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Listen, I just got a refill the other day. We just went on vacation. I just got engaged. You can imagine what happened on that trip. Blue Chew was an extreme part of my engagement to Megs. And listen, Ladies, if you're waiting on your man to put a $7,000 ring on your finger like I did, fucking get him Blue Chew. You're going to go to wadpod.com, W-A-W-D.com backslash blue. And when you get there, your first order is going to be $20 off and you're going to get free shipping. All you're going to pay is $5. You're going to pay $5 at wadpod.com backslash blue on your first order. Guys, ready to propose, ready to go, ready to give your man the weekend he's deserved, ready to give your woman the weekend she's deserved, okay? Blue Chew's going to help. wadpod.com 
backslash blue. As soon as you get there, your first order, $20 off wadpod.com backslash blue. Okay. You're not going to want to go anywhere else. You're not going to want to go to, if you don't go to wadpod.com backslash blue, this episode is brought to you by blue. I just got another email. I just got, I just got an email. That sound that you just heard was a new email. It's a new email because one of you went to wadpod.com black slash blue. Black slash. Not a backslash, a black slash. Because the backslash is black when you put it in your browser. It's the color it is. Wadpod.com backslash blue. You're going to get $20 off your first order for Blue Chew. If, listen, the dicks in America, the dicks in this country are so soft. They are so soft. I swear to God, if you don't get your shit hard with Blue Chew and by going to wadpod.com backslash blue, changing your life, wawd.com backslash blue, you're going to get $20 off your first order. You're going to pay $5 for shipping and you're not going to want to re up your order because it's going to be the best shit you've ever had. You're going to up your order. You're going to up the amount. You're going to up the percentage. You're going to up the number of pills that come in a pack because wadpod.com backslash blue is going to change your life. Back to the show. Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams is done. She's done with TV, dude. She's done with the Wendy Williams show. Okay? I mean, who did it first? Who did it first? Wendy Williams or Ellen? Okay, who quit first? The first lady to quit their talk show this year, it was either Ellen, I think it was Wendy Williams. Anyways, Wendy Williams took to TMZ. She had an exclusive interview with TMZ exclusively to announce her new adventure in the entertainment industry. Ladies and gentlemen, Wendy Williams. Uh, Without further ado, let's bring in... uh... The guest of honor to tell Bring us all on about her plans. Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams joining us on TMZ Live once again. Wendy, it is great to see you. Uh, welcome back. Hey, Wendy. Well, welcome to my formal apartment. Thank yep. you. <laughs> Listen. We are duly impressed. Um, so, look, let's get right into it. Listen, she looks great. She looks great. Wendy, since she's quit the show, looks great. Great. You know what I mean? Listen, Wendy Williams, she's looking good. Whatever her next venture is, it's going to be great. Here we go. Um, that's a big statement for somebody who's been a fixture on television that you're, you just have no interest in. For more anymore. than a decade. So tell us a about A very it. successful one. So Mort and I are talk, and I uh-huh. was like, you know, I've got enough money to do something else. And what I've never done, podcasts, which, by the way... Podcast everyone has, but when you're famous, podcast will make more money for me being famous than doing the Wendy Williams show. So, listen, you know what? She's got a point. She's got a point. There's only six million podcasts streaming currently. So, what's one more? And listen, Wendy's podcast won't be like the other pieces of garbage struggling to get one Patreon for a dollar a month and one or two damn promo code clickbacks on her dude robe uh, sponsorship. But that's besides the point. Her podcast, thanks to her fame, her podcast, you know, that's going to net her millions. Wendy Williams is going to make millions of dollars on her podcast. You know what I mean? Let's see what what she was making. What was she making as a ho- as a host? As a host. Oh, okay. So Wendy Williams, as a host of her TV show, was making ten million dollars a year. Okay, and each year they did one hundred and eighty episodes. So what's that? Like fifty, fifty, fifty-five. It's like, yeah, it's like $55,000 an episode. Now, assuming she'll be consistent again, unlike this heaping pile of dog shit of a podcast 
every other week posting, fuck you. Wendy Williams is at least getting four episodes a month. Okay. And she'll roughly need to make, to make what she was making on the show, 15, one, five. She'll need to make $15,000 per episode. Now, if she's running this podcast, okay, if she's running this podcast, anything like we are, she'll be making at least 15000 easy. Listen, we thought, we laugh at that number here at the Wad Pod Studio. You know what I mean? We're, we're not getting out of bed less than 50 grand an episode. But here's the problem. Wendy's lost her mind. Like, literally. I mean, who, hmm, who can forget this oh, clip? Clap if you've ever wanted to kill somebody. I mean, they just have they just have FBI agents backstage, and and Wendy goes, "Just remember, everyone, we collect your IDs when you came in here. Now, clapped if you've ever buried a body in your backyard last night or the day before." And then it's just the same clip of the women in the audience clap. You know what I mean? And then, like, this lady in the audience here. Play this again. Here, where is she? She's right here. To kill somebody. <laughs> this lady right here. This lady. Look at this lady. This chick has definitely killed her husband. His body is in her backyard right now, rotting underneath a shrub bush that she planted over top of him months ago. Okay, clap if you ever thought of putting your husband's body in a deep freezer only to cut him up into tiny pieces, putting them in trash bags uh, with cylinder blocks only to dump his body in the middle of the ocean. Not like Dexter, but similar clap if you've ever did that. You know what I mean? But now what? And who who do you think, listen, <laughs> who do you think Wendy Williams is Wendy Williams? Who do you, what guests do you think Wendy Williams is going to have on her podcast? Like, who do you think she knows? Let's see. It, play the clip. Does she know anyone? Podcast. Where will I go? I'm not sure. Europe, you know, the France, wherever I want to go. Also, I know Oz. I know who else? You know, many people. Many people. Doctor Oz, by the way, you know Doctor Oz. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, my friend. I've been in New Jersey so many times, I can't count. Okay. <laughs> Well, there you have it. There you have it. Wendy is clearly mentally and physically all there. And episode one of her podcast featuring her only friend at the moment, Dr. Oz, will be out soon. This is the problem. This is the problem with celebrity podcasts. Listen, stop letting celebrities do podcasts, okay? We don't need Jennifer Anderson, Courtney Cox, Jason Bateman, Wendy Williams. We don't need any of them to do a podcast. Let them act. Let them act. I'm sure Dax Shepard is a good guy, okay? But do we really need his opinion on the current economics of the state of this country? No. No. We need Jason Bateman in mid-2000s buddy comedies, getting high movies, okay? We don't need Jennifer Aniston and her friends telling the story and challenges of acting in the 90s and how hard it was to get an audition for the show Friends and how during the show they never knew if they'd really make it. Boo-hoo! These celebrities are amazing, 
Okay. These celebrities are amazing. And I'm not doubting that. I'm not doubting that these celebrities were once great in their time, but as actors and actresses, that's the only way I want them. Listen to me. The era of celebrity podcasting should have died with Amy Schumer. Okay. It should have died with Amy Schumer and her podcast, Two Girls in One Cup, that she did back in 2019. I mean, because there's nothing more, there's nothing more riveting to know that this week, at this very moment, the dynamic between Amy Schumer and her husband in the kitchen on any given Wednesday night, right? Like, who in God's name wants to listen to Courtney Cox and her friends talk about the latest from Russia? It's not looking good for Ukraine, by the way. Like, people like me start podcasts for one reason. We like to talk, and we're good at it. Guess what? If I'm not good at it, can't go and act in a movie or TV show, this is it. Radio's dead. Tell that to the crew of the Hot 97 who just got canned, okay? They went straight to the pod. The morning show on Hot 97 now all has podcasts because that's the only thing they know. Like, what motivation does J-Lo have to be entertaining via a microphone. Here's the understand. <clears throat> Here's the underlining problem with celebrity podcast. These people will never be able to share their real thoughts and opinions with you. They will never. Everything you hear, read, or watch from a celebrity podcast is scripted. Okay, they're handed papers, they give them papers, and they're just reading points like the trans community celebrated the Russian prisoner exchange, get vaccinated and you won't get COVID. I mean, every time, every time Jennifer Aniston thinks she wants to give her own opinion and her mouth opens ever so slightly, they're shoving more money down her throat. They're shoving more money down her throat because... You think people, and by people, I mean, you know, the podcast audience, because let's be honest, they're paid for, okay? You think the people who hired you care about the small town in Ohio that you grew up in? Nope. Nope. They want Ross and Rachel. They want Along Came Polly. They want your act in Horrible Bosses. And every experience you've had on set as someone else. They don't care about you. They don't want the juicy details about how Jennifer Anderson was uncomfortable filming that one scene. The network that hired you doesn't want it. So why are you celebrities doing podcasts? Now... The only way a celebrity podcast gets good is if they're just raw and down to earth. Like if Wendy Williams started her first episode of her first podcast saying, you know, we're live from my $4.5 million penthouse. Clap if you've ever been in a $4.5 million penthouse. Go ahead. Clap if you've ever been in one. And then she continues, I have a feeling that Carmen, my cleaning lady, this is like her maid, by the way, my cleaning lady, I have a feeling that she's been stealing from me. So I put cameras up all around the house and I've been watching her. And I don't think that, you know, having to watch her constantly is just not fair to me. And I don't think I should have to worry about my maid stealing. Clap if you think Carmen is stealing from me. Listen, Ruby Tuesdays, they're laundering money. 
Raymond Blanchett, the CEO of Ruby Tuesday, Sean Letterman, the CEO, the CEOs of Raymond and Sean, go get them. Go get them. Lock them up. Lock them up. Raymond and Sean and all their friends, they're laundering money. The Ruby Tuesdays crew, something shady is going down. Something shady has going down at Ruby Tuesdays. First of all, we remember this clip from the Wad Pod, right? You remember this? When's the last time you've been to a Ruby Tuesdays? If you have personally been to a Ruby Tuesdays, comment on wherever you're watching this. And if you're listening to it, leave us a five-star review because I know you haven't. And in the review, right, I'm writing this review in Ruby Tuesdays. We'll send you merch or something. I will do something for you if you've been to Ruby Tuesdays in the last three months. You know what I mean? Still waiting. Still waiting for someone, just one person, to comment on our videos and say that they're watching this from Ruby Tuesdays. Listen, go to Ruby Tuesdays, prove me wrong. Anyways, last year, Ruby Tuesdays celebrated 50, 50 years, 50 years open. Do you know how Ruby Tuesdays got their start? Do you know how Ru Ruby Tuesdays, Sandy, <clears throat> Sandy, and not my mother, <laughs> but funny enough, but Sandy Beal was on the hospital floor in his bed in the hospital room. And I don't know if you, you've ever been in a hospital room, but you know, when the little thing goes beep, you know, the machine when someone dies in the hot, I don't know if you've ever been in a hospital room when that happens, but it's such a sad moment. It's such a sad moment and I've never been, but I've watched 14 seasons of Grey's Anatomy. So I've like said goodbye to plenty of people. Okay. After 14 seasons, I've said plenty of goodbyes to people in the hospital room. Anyways, Sandy's BFF is dying and his last and final wish is here, take this $10,000 and do something great. Do something so amazing. Something that will change the world. Something that we've never heard of. Be So, Sandy gave his friend the money, he took the money, and he created a sexist, quick, bitey salad bar chain of a restaurant. You know what I mean? Did you know about this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ruby Tuesdays back in the day was uh, sexist. <laughs> back in the day... And I'm sure, I'm sure this is still happening for the locations that are still open. Back in the day, the managers and owners of Ruby Tuesdays were persuaded to be like, hey, look, look, we can probably get more people. We can probably get people to spend more money if they have a pair of tits to look at while they're serving drinks and slinging ribs, okay? And we just got a whole new thing of barbecue. We've got Carolina Reaper ribs. We've got barbecue ribs, the all-new Carolina barbecue ribs. You know what I'm saying? We can probably get them to spend more money if we keep women with the tits in the front and dudes with the dicks in the back, okay? And I'm not talking about dicks as in penises. I'm talking about dicks as in dicks last resort. Listen, <clears throat> So naturally, they got taken to court. And when they got taken to court for the guys who were giving a less of treatment in the front of house and the girls and the whole back of, but they were hiring females because they thought they'd make more money with the females serving the food. They got taken to court. And when they did that, <sighs> they were like, yeah, so what? You know what I mean? Oh, and then, and then, and then, Ruby Tuesdays, if they didn't have even 
bigger balls, even bigger balls to be sexist. They took a fucking page right out of Bam Margera's playbook and blew some shit up. You know what I mean? They did some demolition with their friends. Watch this. Everybody ready? You ready? So they said... In five... They said they were going to blow up this old Ruby Tuesdays building, but instead they blew up the neighbor building, which was a fast food chain that was competing against them. Watch. Four, three, two, one. So, like, clearly this was a prank, right? And a good one. So I'll let you be the judge. So now here we are, fast forward to 2022, and they're giving away a million dollars. Where did they get it? No one knows. In celebration of Ruby Tuesday turning 50, the casual dining restaurant is inviting guests to enjoy delicious burgers starting at $8.99 while they spin for a chance to win $500,000 free food and gift cards as part of a milestone of the birthday celebration, guests can also try a new birthday cake dessert made specially for Ruby Tuesdays from the famed cake boss Buddy from Carlo's Bakery. And here's the owner of Ruby Tuesdays. The past five decades have been full of delicious dishes and celebrations, which is why we are celebrating our 50th birthday. Shouldn't be any less, says Ruby Tuesday CEO Sean Letterman. Lock him up! For our milestone birthday, we're celebrating up five of our beloved burgers and a new addition to our incredible prizes to thank our 50th birthday and loyalty. Blah, 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 blah. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruby Tuesdays spin to win a million dollars. And the word spin to win, the word to, by the way, is T-U-E. Barf. Hey, guy, where in the fuck is Ruby Tuesdays getting a million dollars? Where's Ruby Tuesdays getting a million dollars? Okay, you guys need half of your server's tips just to stay open. And not only do you have a chance to win a million dollars at Ruby Tuesdays, because we all know you won't win anything more than a free cheese stick. You know what I mean? And like, hey, we didn't win the Mega Millions this week, so we're definitely not winning the million dollars from Ruby, Ruby Tuesdays. Not only do you have a chance to win a million dollars, but also you have a chance to win VIP trips to the most iconic music festivals, a.k.a. like what? Fire Festival? Astro World? Like Ruby Tuesdays is sending you to the hottest music festivals. Like what hellhole are you sending these people to? You know what I mean? And... You can also win an all-inclusive VIP racing experience. Now, I don't know what that means, but I can only imagine you go around in a race car one time on a pro track, and then you get to watch the race from the pit. So like a $400 experience, you know what I mean? And as if that wasn't enough, and as if Ruby Tuesdays wasn't loaded with enough money, as if they haven't lost enough money, you can also win one, but not limited to, a free Philly cheesesteak hoagie, ultimate chicken sandwich, mozzarella sticks, a cheeseburger, and Coca-Cola included. That's important with the cheeseburger. The Coke is included. One day's worth of unlimited trips to the salad bar after COVID. No, thank you. An appetizer with coconut shrimp, a free appetizer of boneless wings, or all of that is or. You don't get all of that in one prize. You get all of that as or a free chocolate lava cake ice cream added for $1.99. Now, holy shit. That's basically the biggest deal of 2022. Wow, Levi, I bet you have to buy a whole dinner and like my date's dinner and a dessert to be entered in this contest. Probably. 
have to give them all your info and your passport and all of your other information and your wallet and your ID and your credit card just to be entered in this million dollar giveaway because they don't have a million dollars to give away. Nope. Just walk in. Just step foot into any Ruby Tuesdays. There's a QR code right on the front door. Scan it and you're in. You're scanning and you're spinning to win. And listen, you might just win a cheesesteak. You might just win some cheese sticks. You might just win a burger and Coke. But you'll still be at Ruby Tuesdays. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 51 of the What Are We Doing podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I can't thank you enough for everyone who has joined and who will join and listen to those Patreon bonus episodes. You can join our Patreon at patreon.com backslash what are we doing or wadpod.com, W-A-W-D.com backslash links, L-I-N-K-S and scroll all the way down. You can click the uh, become a VIP button and you will join our Patreon there. We have bonus episodes with Paul, my other friends, some other content. You'll get weekly AMAs, this episode early. This is episode 51. Thank you to our sponsors, Dude Robe and Blue Chew. You can go to wadpod.com backslash blue for $20 off your first order of blue chew. You only pay $5 shipping. That's what we're giving you a hard dick and a good time. And you can go to dudrobe.com D U E D E.com dude robe D U D E R O B E robe.com. Uh, and use promo code WAD, W-A-W-D, for 20% off your purchase and basically free shipping, almost, I'm pretty sure. This is the What Are We Doing podcast, wadpod.com backslash links is everything you need. My name's Levi McCurdy. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in episode 52.